The Aptila Networks is here, and we're of course delighted to have them. They do fantastic carrier Wi-Fi wor uh, work uh, around the world, and I'm delighted to introduce Johan Terve, VP Marketing of Aptila Networks. Johan, welcome to Wi-Fi. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to make a 25 minutes argument why Wi-Fi probably is the best insurance policy an operator can get to protect their core business. But before I do, I just want to give you a few words about our company so you know the perspective I come from. Aptilo Networks is a Swedish software vendor. We are the leader in carrier Wi-Fi service management. We have 100 plus deployments in 70 countries. And um, we, we rely, of course, to go to the market with uh, our partners like Ericsson, Alcatel, Lucent, uh, Aris, and of course, Ruckus that is here that we are partnering with on the ecosystem level. To explain a little bit more what we do, you have a Wi-Fi network, but that's just a Wi-Fi network. In order to make it into a service, you need something more. You need service control. And that's exactly what we do. So we do access control through portals, SIM authentication, what have you. We do policy control to control the user experience in the network. We do charging of users. Uh, we have built-in captive portals and analytics. So that's basically our piece of, of the cake, of the carrier Wi-Fi cake. Uh, we also have our own gateway, although we mostly work with our partners' gateways, the, the, the bigger, uh, high-capacity high gateways from our partners. The telecom landscape is changing. It's really changing. And uh, this is how it used to be, right? The cable operators, they had rich content over high-speed cable networks. Um, the mobile operators, they didn't have as much content, but they had mobility. And then two things happened simultaneously. The OTT players like Netflix and, and others came in, and at the same time, 4G was launched. So all of a sudden, the combination between a 4G network and uh, over-the-top vendors like Netflix came in and competed with the cable operators. They were squeezed from two ends. And that is the main reason why cable operators need to go Wi-Fi. They need to provide a, a nomadic experience, at least, for their users. And most of them do, and they are very smart about it, deploying Wi-Fi in the right locations, and can then give this nomadic experience that their users expect. Then we have the mobile operators. I mean, you have seen this picture before, right? About 70 to 80% already is going through Wi-Fi of the traffic. And in a few years, that's projected to be 85 90%. Now, that is really a game changer for a mobile operator. Because if this trend is true, which I believe in, then they risk to go from being a mobile broadband provider to something that I use in between hotspots. And what that will mean in terms of churn, everybody can understand. So for me, carrier Wi-Fi is primarily a customer intention game, for sure. And if you don't believe me in this argument, this is the number one reason, by the way, why mobile operators need to go Wi-Fi. And if you don't believe me in this argument, let's look at the user, the end user, the customer. My 18-year-old son, he would never even consider hiring a landline when he moved from home if he has a good mobile connection in his house. SIM cards to be tied to a SIM identity is not important for him. What's important for him is to be able to be connected with all his devices, not only the mobile phone, to a high-speed network. And he often communicates with his 
friends through, through WhatsApp and, and other applications like that. And if we, tr if we think that this will change dramatically just because he's getting 28 or 30 years old, I think we are only fooling ourselves. And this is what operators need to relate to, and that is the next driver to why they really need to go Wi-Fi. And for that matter, Wi-Fi calling, because remember, if you cannot reach into the home of, of your subscribers, they don't have a landline, they will go to someone that can provide that service for them. So that is the main driver, I think, for Wi-Fi calling, that provide the indoor coverage for the, for the mobile service. And then, if this is not enough, think about this. How many devices do you have in average? I think it's like three, four, right? And only one maybe has a SIM card. And if you are going to be a service provider for your customers, you really need to cover all their devices. And that's the number three reason why you need to go Wi-Fi. So it's really up to you as an operator to embrace this opportunity or see someone else eat your lunch. I have some help from Frederick Jungerman at Tesh Efficient um, that have helped me to calculate the cost of, of churn, or rather investigate the cost of churn. Because if now Wi-Fi is primarily a customer attention game, then we can actually put a number to it, right? And the number in this investigation through T-Mobile in, in uh, Holland, I think it is, and Copen and EE in UK, is that the cost of churn, or to recruit a new customer, rather, to compensate for the one that you have lost, is about 200 US dollars, around that. Now, another way of looking at that is that it's actually 15 to 20% of the operator's revenue that they spend in customer retention and churn prevention. And, you know, just do the math. If you are a 10 billion operator, that is 1.5 to 2.0 billion a year that you spend just to stand in the same place. It's a little bit like taking the escalator in the wrong direction. You run like never before, but you are still on the same place, right? Another investigation done by Annalise Mason is that uh, they did this uh, re uh, poll for Archiva in their customer base, and the respondents said that they would change operator. 58% said that they would change to another operator if they could provide a better Wi-Fi experience. This is fact. If, of course, this is just one uh, poll around 2,000 2, people. But then we have another operator that actually is the only so far that has actually went out very publicly and tell exactly how they see this. And that's Shaw Communications in, in Canada. They are a Canadian cable MSO. 12,000 employees, 4 billion US dollars in revenues. And in the Q4 2014 earnings call, Mr. Bradshaw, the CEO, said that active internet Wi Fi customers also have 35% lower churn rate than those customers that don't use their Wi Fi service. 35%. And another question was, would you consider change to another operator? And there, 75% of the surveyed customers confirmed that they likely would recommend or move to Shaw just because their Wi-Fi service. That is really strong figures, right? So what I really think we need is a different um, ROI calculation altogether, because the traditional one looks like this. If you go to your management as an operator and come up with a traditional ROI, 
you will not be, be uh, they will not allow you to invest in Wi-Fi. I'm pretty sure of that. Because Wi-Fi is considered to be free or included for the subscribers. So with the additional service you can charge for, you will add a few tens of millions to the billions that you have in your core business. And then you will have a cost. And even if you can show that the Wi-Fi network is profitable in itself, adding a few millions on the profit side, it's, they will just look at this and they say, OK, so you want us to add Wi-Fi, a new technology for us, and just add a few millions on top of our profits. Forget it. But then they haven't looked into the churn side and the alternative cost. So if we play with the, the fact that we had 15 to 20 percent of revenues is in thin air just to reduce uh, the churn and keep, keep, keep the customer happy so that they, they uh, and, and have marketing campaigns to gain new customers. Well, if you put that in context and put those two models together, you will easily see where the money is in carrier Wi-Fi. It's not on the direct monetization. It's all into the reduced churn part. And of course, that is hard to prove. But you can always show on the show uh, example, 35% less churn, 35% less churn for a 10 billion mobile operator that spends 15 to 20% of the, of the revenues uh, to prevent this. That is a lot of money. So direct monetization for the larger operators, I would argue, is just a tip of the iceberg. The real money is beneath the surface. Of course, then we have our Wi-Fi ISP customers. It's a different ballgame for them. They don't have the thousands or millions, or rather, subscribers. They have just a few thousands, maybe. So then it's a limited effect for them in the reduced churn. And they must make Wi-Fi as a sustainable business for themselves. And they are very creative about this. They do ad hoc services. They do B2B services to, to venues. Etc. Uh, I have a few examples to share with you. Uh, one was up here yesterday, uh, and that is uh, QB Wireless and Lydia. She, 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 uh, QB Wireless have been acquired by Erona, uh, but before they did um, Wi-Fi services only, and they have been profitable with this, and they have very creative ways. She shared the, the sponsored access that we should talked about yesterday. Very creative way of monetizing Wi-Fi. We have another Wi-Fi ISP in Peru. They do, they combine the location with Facebook login. So we help them to, to show what location in the shopping mall, for instance, a user is in. And then they, the user have to log into Facebook. And then they show the right ad at the right moment for the right user. And that is also another powerful way of monetizing Wi-Fi. But again, for the large operator with millions of subscribers, it's mainly still about churn reduction. And of course, to keep up the ARPU. I mean, maybe you cannot increase the ARPU, but you can prevent the ARPU from going down. And that is a lot of money. Now, as a tier one operator, you have a lot to learn from the Wi-Fi ISPs. So I think there are two reasons for a tier one operator to go into the B2B with business to sell attractive Wi-Fi services to, to venues. First of all, they can earn money on it, of course. That's, that's a big driver. The other driver is, if you are not at home, you are not at work or in between, where are you? You are at a venue. So they need the venues to really gain that footprint. And that makes me come to a simple uh, formula for success for a carrier that we have found among our 
carrier customers. You need to be at all locations where Wi-Fi is used, ideally. And most importantly, you need to cater for all devices, not just the one with the SIM card. That's the simple formula. It's just like that. All locations times all devices gives you success. And to show it a little bit differently, it looks like this. And there, home spots is important for the ones that have that type of footprint. You have the B2B to venues that is extremely important as well. So you really need to have another mindset. Traditional telecom vendors and operators is looking more to the small cells hotspot side of things. You need to expand it and also do rooming with others, cooperate with other operators like the cable operators do in the US, cooperating so that they have one big Wi-Fi network. I think that's the model for the future. And then, of course, it's a total different ballgame to, to go to venue Wi-Fi for an operator. And that is the biggest mistake that some of our less successful operators have done. They haven't considered the complexity in site acquisition. If you go with the mindset that, OK, I rent some space for my Wi-Fi access point, and that's it, you will fail. What you need to do in venue Wi-Fi is to sell attractive Wi-Fi services to venues. That's what you need to do. And they all have different uh, demands or requirements. They have a, a set that is the same, but they all have different requirements. Like a hotel, for instance, may still want to have uh, integration with their billing systems, the PMS, and so forth. So, and um, yesterday, uh, some stressed that, OK, venue Wi-Fi is nothing for operators. I, I would, uh, I would uh, actually argue the contrary. Because think about it. You have the complexity of security. You have the terror threats with, with uh, needs and demands for, for uh, uh, legal intercept. You have Hotspot 2.0. That will not make things easier. So a venue like a shopping mall has two ways to go, as far as I'm concerned. Either they put enough resources into the Wi-Fi side and become an operator themselves in, within their venue and put the uh, right resources in. Or they let an operator come in and do it for them. And that is a huge op opportunity for operators. And then, if you are doing that, you really need to have a system that can handle the multi-tenancy aspect. Because most of the venues has a big chain. Hotel, for instance, with a lot of hotels all over the world. And for the portals, they need to be able to control that themselves down to the individual venue to be able to change a certain picture or a certain text but still maintains the same look and feel all across the board. They also need different analytics, the local analytics, all the way up in the change to a more condensed view of the analytics. So these are the type of things that you need to consider when you are going to a venue. And of course, it must scale to millions of daily sessions. That is, of course, important. If you have a system done for a, a venue only, uh, you have thousands of, of users per day. If you are an operator having a big venue uh, chain, that will add up to millions a day instead. So scalability is another extremely important factor. And then you have the issue we were discussing a little bit yesterday, I think. Carrier Wi-Fi is different from venue Wi-Fi. Carrier Wi-Fi is about security, seamless connectivity. People just should just fly onto the network. Venue Wi-Fi is all about engagement, user engagement. L manual login to be able to, to uh, brand the venue. Um, 
advertising, what have you. And while we are at that subject, I would like to actually address this with customer engagement. Because yesterday we listened to the vision, typically that I enter the venue, and all of a sudden I get a message, hey, Yuan, welcome. This is your third time here. And just because of that, we will buy you a beer. Do I, as a subscriber, do I, as a user, really want that? I'm not sure. Do the venue owner want that? I'm not sure. And if we are not, as an industry, fixing this, I tell you what, someone else will do, the re regulators, the, the governments. And as far as I understand it, it is a regulation as that going on as we speak. So what's the problem with actually anonymize the information? That could be a middle ground, right? Saying that, OK, this is a male 50 years old. That's it. That's your, all you know about him. And then you provide some ad that is suitable for, for, uh, for me as a 50-year-old guy that you think is suitable. Or actually keep some of his Facebook uh, interest, etc. You can do that too. But not saving exactly who I am. And I think most users would actually accept that because after all, if you are consuming a free service, you, you, you are the, the product, right? And I think most people accept that fact. But it's also possible to link those two words together. Because I think somebody said yesterday that, OK, if you have a carrier Wi-Fi, you cannot have user engagements. It's all in the carrier hands. Wrong. I can prove you wrong in that. For instance, Telia in Sweden, they have an agreement with a, a stadium that if a user come into the stadium, they send them an SMS, a welcoming SMS about the event at hand, about information and, and what, what not. You can also forward them to a portal if you like. It's n nothing like you can only do SIM authentication. You can do SIM authentication and a portal experience or an advert. So I think it's very important to understand that you can actually bridge carrier Wi-Fi with venue Wi-Fi. And just to do a short uh, summary here, again, Wi-Fi is the majority of your user's traffic. It's, it's just that you have to accept that fact. And it's all about control, really, because the scary thing is that you will only control the user's experience in a very small portion of their time. So carrier Wi-Fi can help you to expand that control with residential home spots, uh, offload with uh, your own hotspots, etc. And then if you add venue Wi-Fi, you will increase that further. So it's really about, as an operator, to increase your relevance. You need Wi-Fi to stay relevant in the eyes of your subscribers. And it's, of course, about indoor coverage as well, and, of course, customer attention. And the takeaway I want you to have from this session is that carrier Wi-Fi is a customer retention game. Venue Wi-Fi is critical to maximize Wi-Fi footprint. You cannot forget about the other devices. That is a fat mistake, because the user expects you to help them to connect all their devices. And you must have a scalability in your system. And if I may say so myself, Aptilo, we have the formula to your success. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Johan. Thank and you. I, I, it's always, I, I think, been impressive to me how many uh, different uh, categories of Wi Fi you actually serve, because you're obviously active in offload with the carriers, you're active in stadiums with and without carriers, presumably in venues, and you have resellers that go out and, and, and uh, sell even more stuff. So you're really covering all the bases as one of the few, right? But the, the number of carriers you now support, what are the numbers? 
100 plus in 70 countries. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and most of those operators actually sell B2B services in one way or the other to, mm -hmm. to uh, venues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's great to have you. You also recently uh, had uh, an announcement about, uh, for example, stadiums in the, U in, in the United States, right? So it's yes. something like, what was it? Fourteen? We, we did our 14th uh, stadium in the U.S. now. Yeah. And yeah. with various different partners, obviously, right? That you yeah, can't tell I me cannot, who are. I cannot tell you what the operator is because then I have to kill you <laughs> or they kill me. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a big operator there yeah. that uh, do these uh, deployments and yeah. we are decertified solutions. So the, the, the network side is two different vendors, Ericsson or Alu, but we are always in the, yeah. the back end. Yeah. Well, Johan, as usual, hmm? thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. And we'll see you again very soon, I hope. Thanks. Thanks.